The power of working longer to increase your retirement sustainability, income sustainability in particular. So again, this is going to be part two of the, uh, oh, maybe two or three, let's see, what we'll time check. Okay. Of the three, maybe two or three part series on this study by John Chauvin from Stanford uh, and some other folks that they did research on to see if it makes sense for you to stay working in order to increase your retirement sustainability and increase your retirement income. And their argument is, yes, that's the most important thing you can do when it comes to your financial stability. My argument, though, is also yes, but in a little bit different way. Not that you continue to work, but we're going to show you why. And we're going to dive into that here in part two. So don't forget to subscribe down below, my friends. All right. So increasing sustainable lifetime standard of living is very expensive. At 62, the conversion factor for couples is 0 0.033267, which means that for every additional $100,000 that you annuitize, uh, would raise your annual inflation-adjusted standard of living by $3,327. These quotes implicitly take into account the current real low interest rates and the anticipated mortality of today's retirement age individuals. All right, so I want to show you this because this is a uh, make sure we're going to go back to this right here. Oops, I went way over. All right, so we're going to show you this annuity chart because I think it's actually pretty, it's critically important. So what we're doing here is a lot, of, as we've already talked about the last thing about uh, annuitizing uh, for your optimal wealth. And a lot of people, I'm not annuitizing, but let's just say you do that because this is what the, the study shows. Here you are right here, $100,000 for a joint couple who's 62 years old, and this is a man and a woman couple. They're going to net $3,327 a year inflation adjusted income. That same hundred thousand dollars, if they waited till they're seventy, would net them about four four thousand four hundred or so. So you can see the amount that a hundred thousand dollar buys increases by each and every year. But that's you know a thirty three percent roughly increase between sixty two and seventy, which is the exact same thing with Social Security. You take Social Security at sixty two, you get less of a payment. You take Social Security at seventy, you get more of a payment. Why? Because you're more likely to die here. You're closer to death at 70 than you are to 62. So from an actuarial table, it's all the same to the insurance company. They say, you're going to die in 25 years. You're going to die in 17 years. We're going to pay the same amount. Now, if you're a, uh, a male and just using a single life, your $100,000 will get you about $4,200 a month in inflation-adjusted income. And if you wait till you're 70, it gets you about $5,700 a month, uh, not a month, a year in inflation-adjusted income. Right, yeah, a year because men die sooner. That's all there is to it. And a single life is just you. Once you die, the payment stops. Uh, once you die down here, the payment continues on for your surviving spouse. So that's, uh, I thought that's pretty interesting. The longer you wait, the more uh, the benefits you can get from annuitizing a portfolio, which goes back into their whole scenario of why working longer. Oops, keep going to that wrong one. Why working longer increases your retirement sustainability because they're saying you're adding more to your retirement pot. You're taking out none from your retirement pot while you're still working and you're increasing your Social Security benefit. Inherently it makes sense. We're going to go into this a little bit here, too. All right. Uh, let's see. Financial planners often use replacement ratios like the one they talked about before, which is your pre-retirement income needs. Uh, your pre-retirement income versus your retirement income needs. How much you need in retirement versus how much you're using when you didn't retire. Uh, these ratios are a rule of thumb deriving from the life cycle framework. Uh, and Schultz and Shardy show that optimal replacement rates derived from a life cycle model, model vary greatly by household. For example, a couple with children should target a lower replacement rate uh, then a couple without children, as a former, the couple with children, old Josh, can reduce child care expenses during retirement. I don't have to pay for braces. I don't have to pay for basketball shoes, uh, field trips, the whole thing. In addition, there's been some debate regarding the appropriate denominator. Yeah, it just says how much do you really spend more in retirement or less. It's not really much of a debate anymore, but that's fine. Uh, the optimal replacement ratio can vary greatly depending on the choice of the denominator. Yep. Uh, in our stylized example, since we assume, assume a 0% wage growth, uh, both economy-wide and for the individual, all denominator choices are equivalent, so they're just you're, you're comparing apples to apples, all right? And they do not take a stand on the optimal retirement replacement ratio, because you can't take a stand. I mean, at the end, we just don't know. What do you need in retirement relative to the income you're making now is completely different on the guy next door. You just don't know. 
So you just can't have in general 80% or 70% rule. It doesn't make sense. It's got to be more specific than that. So I actually appreciate that very, very much that these guys are saying that because I 100% agree. All right, let's keep going down here. All right, so, uh, okay. Oh, oh, oh. Despite 30 years of saving 9% of earnings, the annuitized 401k balance uh, for only 19.4% of retirement income with Social Security accounted for the remainder. This fact alone highlights the incredible value of Social Security. (sighs) If our stylized primary earner delays retirement by one year to 67, again, where we're delaying retirement also means we're delaying Social Security. There are four uh, impacts on retirement income. The annuity is cheaper, right? You take an annuity at 66, costs more than taking at 67 because you're one year likely to die. Closer to death, that's 67. Wealth increases by the return on assets because, again, we're initially saying the asset base only gave us a real rate of return of zero. That's after inflation. Kept up inflation, that's it. Uh, wealth increases by the, def- the additional uh, contributions and Social Security benefit increases by 8% uh, over and above inflation. Because remember, Social Security has cost of living adjustments and an 8% increase on top of that. Let's keep diving down here. I, I think that's so, so doggone important. Those are the four things about staying working longer. So we conclude that by working one year longer, retirement income has increased by 7.75%. This increase is weighted as the average of 8% increase in real Social Security and the 6.7% increase in the real value of the annuity payment obtained from the higher 401k balance. Uh, Okay, so this is critical. The weights are based on each share. Social Security share is 81% and your 401k is 19%. Hmm, Interesting. Uh, Now let's get the relative importance of each of the four impacts on retirement income listed. Remember, uh, let's just look at it. So I show you uh, page 10 PDF. I'll show it to you. So, relative, so I'm just telling you, man, this is where it's going to get fun. All right. So we see all these numbers and we're saying, oh, man, those numbers, I can't follow that. Yes, you can. Yes, you can. I'm going to show you the quote here. The right. No, 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 no. I thought I said page 10. Maybe it's down here. Right here. Oh, where is it here? Hold on just a second. got to show you the equi- right here. Okay. So there's four impacts on increasing your social, your income in retirement. Number one, we have a total of increase of 100%. So that's our total. We're going to increase it by 10 bucks. Of that 10 bucks increase from where does the money increase come from? 8.2% comes from because you're a year older. So every year you age, you get an extra 8% in income from your annuity. Huh, that sounds like something. 8.6% because you've added more to your portfolio. Actually, increasing your rates of return has does no impact whatsoever. The biggest thing is increasing your contribution. You've made more, you put more into it, you've taken none out. So you're basically a double whammy. You're adding to it on top of you're not taking it out, and you're getting older. So you're one year closer to death. 8.2, 8.6, but the hugest 83.1%. The decomposition shows that 83% of the impact of delaying retirement comes from additional Social Security benefits. The rest comes from roughly equal impacts of cheap annuity and additional contribution. 83% of increasing your income in retirement is from delaying Social Security. You see where I'm going with this? Hmm. Do you have to continue to work in your crappy old job in order to delay Social Security? No, no, you don't. Huh, interesting. Hmm, what does that mean then? Let's keep going down. If 83% is contingent on delaying Social Security, the de- I'm going to say this again. The decomposition shows that 83% of the impact of delaying retirement, what they're saying is to continue to work, comes from additional Social Security benefits. Even though they're saying taking additional Social Security benefits by delaying retirement means you're continuing to work. Hmm. We can also consider the range of uh, increasing investment returns, real investment returns after inflation from zero to 8%. Uh, let's see, do I have a t- the second column of table two reports the growth of retirement income relative to the baseline as a result of one year of additional work. The results suggest that the impact, and this is pretty important, the impact 
Uh, relative impact of working longer is fairly insensitive to asset returns. One year of additional work raises retirement income by roughly 8% uh, for real returns of 0 to 3%. And then the income rises gradually to 10% in the case of 8% total returns. So basically saying if you got real returns of 0 to 3% and you worked an additional year, you increase your retirement income by about 8%. If you get 10, uh, 8 to 9, 10% real returns, uh, you would increase your standard of living by 10%. So <laughs> essentially, a quadrupling of your rates of return would give you a 25% increase in your standard of living. All right. And a quadrupling of that rate of return would be a huge quadrupling of your risk, too. So working longer, i.e. deferring Social Security, gives you a whole lot more increase in, in your retirement income ability, increase of your retirement income extreme of income than it does if you have a higher rate of return in retirement or uh, by, by a pretty significant amount. I mean, I cannot stress enough, increase your risk and it will increase your return, your income by about 25%, but you're increasing your risk by 400%. 400% higher risk for a 25% rate of return uh, uh, income in, in increase. Not a good trade-off from the risk return category. It's just not. Let's keep going down. All right. However, even when asset returns are very high, the impact of Social Security still dominates the increase in retirement income. The number one thing when it comes to increasing your retirement income by far and away, even with high, in fact, I'd say even not realistic returns, we're talking eight, nine, we're talking 10, 11, 12% before inflation is social security. The impact of social security still dominates the increase in retirement income. Hmm. So again, these guys are saying the increase in, reti in retirement income through Social Security is the number one contingency it is. And they're saying, so work longer, i.e. to delay taking Social Security because that is the biggest impact on your retirement income standard of living as you go forward. But that doesn't mean you have to work longer. It just means defer taking Social Security. The results are unequivocal. Primary earners of ages 62 to 69 can stamp, substantially increase their retirement standard of living by working longer. The longer work can be sustained, so the more longer you work in your crappy old job, the higher the retirement standard of living is. For example, retiring at 66 instead of 62 can increase your living standard by about a third. But remember, they're assuming you're retiring and that's the same time you're taking Social Security. So they're saying work from 62 to 66 also means you're not taking Social Security from 62 to 66. What I'm saying is quit your job at 62, live off your retirement assets to delay taking Social Security. And that's going to be almost the same because Social Security is about 80 to 83 percent of the total increase of your retirement increase in sustainability. The other is a factor if you're getting older, you're getting closer to taking annuity, your portfolio is not being tapped as soon. But the, it, the predominant, the vast amount is your Social Security income. It's not working longer. They're just saying working longer, but they could have said the exact same thing when it comes to delaying taking Social Security. Quit earlier. Just don't take Social Security. But they're saying working longer is synonymous with not taking Social Security until you retire. And I'm saying you don't need to do that. You don't need to split them up. All right. Uh, as we'll show, uh, okay, as we will show in section three, no reasonable amount of additional savings could impact the retirement standard of living so significantly. <sighs> so you can save, 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 hopefully take more and more and more risk. That is secondary, third, it's not even, uh, it's not even spitting distance of the impact of taking Social Security later. Oh man, I just cannot stress that enough. The second result observed in the table is that the returns to working longer decrease as earnings increase. A decomposition of the four impacts, we talked about that, reveals that the first three impacts, cheaper annuity, returns to wealth, and additional contribution are, are constant across wage, wage levels. However, the Social Security impact changes. Uh, Social Security share of the final retirement income increases. The weight on the, the AIME becomes lessened because Social Security is a re, it's a it was a progressive. The more income you make, the less benefits you're going to get from Social Security. Thus, an eight percent growth in Social Security benefit has a higher weight for workers of the lower wage, uh, uh, which translates to higher returns for additional working year. So, the more money you make, 
The less it means to continue to work because Social Security is geared towards those on the lower end. So work, I'm making $150,000. You're not increasing your Social Security that much relative to someone's making $40,000. And I've said that a couple of videos before. All the above analysis was for the primary worker uh, for, of a couple. In that case, Social Security benefits are paid in the form of a second to die annuity. And we assume that private retirement wealth is converted into the same form, i.e. a second to die annuity. We now address how working longer impacts retirement living standard for single people. While the increase in Social Security is the same as our base, the annuity factors are different because single people have cheaper annuities because they're not going to have a survivor benefit. A hundred percent. And we already talked about that, so I'm not really going to dive into that. So let's keep going down here. Uh, da, 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 represent, OK, so base the annuity is going to. Um, the increase in lifetime retirement is always great for, okay. The increase in lifetime retirement income is always greater for married couples compared to single as a higher income is paid out as a second and nine annuity on top of social security. So all that all we're saying here is, we're, um, is we're just saying at the end of the day, if you're single, it's cheaper to buy an annuity because there's no second person to benefit. And it's also cheaper for you to delay uh, taking social security. I don't to say cheaper, but it makes more sense because there's no person to benefit. But, Every situation is different, if that makes sense. So if you're single, taking an annuity makes sense, be, more sense because you get more bang for your buck. Does it make more sense to delay taking Social Security? Well, the answer is yes, but you're not going to leave it as an impact to your surviving spouse. So let's just put it that way. An alternative way to boost retirement living is to save more. Uh, we've already talked about that. It just does not matter that much. Unless you start from a young, 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 young age at 36 uh, and you save 1% more, uh, so suppose that our stylized primary earner worker saves 1% more of wages starting at age 36. That is, they move from 6% to 7% personal contribution rate with a 3% employer match. So they're saving 10% as opposed to 9 If the higher rate of contributions were saved for the entire 30 years, that would have, uh, let's see, then the replacement rate would rise to 33% uh, percent from 30 uh, from, to 52 percent from the base of 50, 53 percent from the base of 52 percent translates in 2.16 percent in retirement income. That's nothing. I mean, so if you save an extra, uh, what's that, 12 and a half percentage points a year from nine to 10 for each year of your 30 years of working, it's going to translate into an extra 2 percent of your retirement spending income. Not a big deal. And we can get that by working an extra year is what these guys are saying. Extra couple of months, delaying Social Security. Uh, delaying in retirement by one year is roughly 3.1, uh, 3.5 times as impactful as saving an additional 1% of Social Security. Uh, to put it another way, working just over three months longer, i.e. delaying retiring, would have the same impact of a one percentage point in increase in the contribution rate. I think that's pretty amazing. All right. I pretty much want to stop there. Um, and I, the reason is because I think I've hit the point on my head, uh, on my head, on the head here. There's a couple of things that'll help you. Uh, let's see. And we talk about the saving more, working longer for Social Security. Uh, we talk about a high wage worker to a low, uh, the lower wage worker need only work 2.1 months to equivalent the benefit of 30 years of savings because Social Security is progressive. Uh, the higher wage worker has to work longer because they don't get as much on the higher end. So I, I, I want to stop here because at the end of the day, I think I made my point. What they're saying is the way you can increase your retirement income and have more retirement income is work longer. And they're working longer synonymously with delaying taking Social Security. And I completely agree with that. But the, and the reason for that is because your Social Security represents such a significant impact of your retirement income. So the longer you delay taking Social Security, the more benefit you're going to have, sustainable benefit from an annuity that is adjusted for inflation each and every year. So some of the other strategies are you could buy an annuity with some of your 401k money. And the way to increase your income there is to buy an annuity as you get older because it's more expensive. Uh, it's less expensive to you because you're more likely to die sooner. I mean, again, an annuity at 62 versus an annuity at 70, we already showed you that the 62 one is significantly more expensive for the same amount of income. Work longer, you're adding to your portfolio, which is good. And you're also not taking from your portfolio, which is good. It's just not that significant. It'll give you about an 8% of the 100% of the $100. Let's just say using $100 that increases your retirement income, $8 will be generated because you're getting older from your buying annuity. $8 will be simply due to the fact that you've added more to your portfolio and you haven't taken money out. The rest has come from increasing Social Security. 
contributing more, having taken on more risks, it's just not worth it. The number one thing to do is to defer Social Security by far. Nothing even comes close. Nothing even comes close. So if you're 62 and you say, I got to work another five years, this you would think would prove that, but it doesn't prove it. It says, no, defer taking Social Security is by far and away the number one thing you can do. Taking on more risk, adding more to your portfolio does not get the job done relative to the one thing, one thing only, which is deferring taking Social Security. And from a way second place, we're talking way back second place is earning, uh, getting older. We can take an annuity because they'll pay you more because you're going to be older next year than this year. That's number two. And that's it. Everything else is secondary. So when you see work longer and increase your retirement income, it's actually work longer to, let me get someone from Columbia's calling me. It's actually work longer in order to defer taking Social Security. That is a lesson, my friends. Defer, defer, defer. I hope this helps. I know there's a lot going on here. Don't forget to subscribe. I'd love to hear your comments on this for sure. I can dive into this deeper if you need. I'll put links in the show notes. But as always, you got questions, thoughts, concerns, comments, thumbs up. And uh, we'll see you next time. Thanks, guys.